Hello and welcome you're watching Left Right and Center I am Nidhi Razdan Well it has been an unprecedented confrontation between the government and the judiciary for several months now and it's taken a sharp turn today as well with law minister Kiran Rijiju saying at a public event in the national capital that while politicians go back to the people and face elections and therefore are accountable to people for their work judges do not face any public scrutiny once they become judges they remain judges they don't have to fight elections but that the public is also watching their actions watching the work they do and in this age of social media as he put it it's not going to be easy to hide anything now it comes just a day after the law minister actually tweeted a video of a retired high court judge's justice sodhi's interview to a youtube channel where justice sodhi had said that he believes the collegium system of appointing judges is unconstitutional uh, and very strongly criticized the lack of transparency in the way judges are appointed the law minister had tweeted this on sunday uh, this video and described it as a sane point of view further escalating tensions with the judiciary however justice sodhi has today in fact said that the law minister shouldn't be firing off his shoulder that he does believe that the collegium system is unconstitutional and he goes on to explain why uh, he believes that it lacks transparency now for a long time as i said for months now this confrontation has been escalating between both sides but where is it heading that is the big question the government says or it has at least said on the floor of the house in parliament that it's not planning to bring in a new law to appoint judges like the one that the supreme court had struck down earlier the supreme court is definitely hitting back we're seeing the way they made public again in an unprecedented way just last week uh, the uh, recommendations or the reports of the uh, intelligence bureau and the rnaw on uh, judges uh, who they wanted to appoint to different high courts and you know put that out in public domain one judge being uh, you know sort of rejected by the center because of his sexual orientation another because he had criticized uh, the prime minister or he had shared an article which was critical of the prime minister we're joining us first on the program today is justice deepak gupta former judge of the supreme court justice deepak gupta to you i begin by asking what you make of the law minister's comments today uh, you know once again raising this issue uh, of of you know judges Uh, their appointments at this public event saying that judges do not you know face public scrutiny the way politicians do but that the public is watching yeah. i think first of all i think uh, this is not one odd statement today it is a series of statement not only by the law minister but by other high functionaries aimed in fact i have written about it that it is, seems to undermine the independence of the judiciary the independence uh, and the strength of the judiciary but that has not happened maybe they rocked by what the collegium has done and you know put out in the public domain what you pointed out the various factors which had weighed with the government for rejecting names having said that everybody is entitled to their point of view and uh, some people can say that yes the legislature legislators are elected parliamentarians are elected whereas judges are not but that is the way we have chosen in our constitution the judiciary to be unlike the american judiciary where at the district level a lot of people get elected as judges when the constitution was drafted it was felt that judges should not be elected they should be judges for long and there are many and, and in most country judges are not elected especially to the highest courts and therefore i don't see this is no argument actually this argument is without any basis that we get elected so we represent the for voice of the people see this uh, this bogey which is being raised about the will of the people i think let it be made clear that even the ruling government ruling government does not actually have the strength in numbers to say that it represents the will of the people we have the first past the post system and in that sense they have been elected according to the constitution to govern the country but they can't say they represent the will of the people because as i read today they have only got 37% of the votes polled and if you look at it if you look at it in comparison to the entire electorate it would be approximately 25% so you have the support of 25% further we never go to elections on these issues whether the collegium should be there or not there this is never an election issue 
I mean, but I sir, don't see I how the people of the people comes into this. Play. Can, can I ask you because this this is very important what you're saying, and and you know uh, you're not holding back clearly. I can see you're being very forthright and blunt on this. But before I come to the merits and demerits of of the collegium system itself. As you said, you don't see Kiran Rijiju's comments as you know being a one-off. Clearly, there is there have been a series of them. The vice president has made them. So, uh, you know, there is something more at play here. What do you think that is? What What do you think that the government wants to do? Do you think they want to bring in a new law to to deal with ju judicial appointments? Are they testing the waters? Is this a trial balloon? What is it? I think they're testing the waters. They're also testing what the public feels like. What's the reaction? What how does the court will the court sort of cave in and sort of agree with them? Sometimes you had NJAC, then you had this, we, why can't we be part of the collegium? Though I think the law minister later clarified that it was never an intention to say that they should be part of the collegium. But they wanted an entry and to discuss matters. In fact, I am not too much against that, where the government representative, maybe the law minister or any other representative, sits with some members of the collegium and discusses names which are controversial. You can't have a discussion on every name if the government approves uh, fine. If the government sends back a name and the collegium reiterates, then there could be a discussion. I don't see any reason why, because there are many things uh, Nidhi, which cannot be said in writing many times. When you are appointing people to high offices like judges of the High Court and the Supreme Court, sometimes you don't want to say things in writing. It's interesting you're saying that. You're saying that this can in a way be um, a halfway, a meeting point where the government doesn't have a formal role in actually appointing judges in that sense, but you can have a, 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 a more sort of a, a discussion when, when there are names on which you're stuck. And, yeah. But ultimately you're saying the collegium should prevail as it no, does the now. The collegium must prevail. I, I mean, t as it is, the law says the collegium must prevail. But when we talk about improvements in the collegium, you know, sometimes the... Uh, government has objections, the collegium accepts those. But like you saw, this time one of the objections was that one gentleman had shared a, an article which was critical of the Prime Minister. I'm, I'm sorry, even if he had written an article critical of the Prime Minister, that does not make him ineligible to be, the, uh, to be a judge if his competence, his integrity is otherwise beyond doubt. So, can I ask you, sir, that, uh, you know, on, the, on this issue of the way the Supreme Court responded to this, uh, uh, as you mentioned there, and I, I mentioned at the beginning, by making public these intelligence reports on, you know, candidates for, for uh, high court judgeships, etc. Uh, one of the arguments that has been made is that this was a good step because it's, it, it brings in transparency, it makes it clear to the public why certain appointments are going through and why others are, are not going through, but that it cannot be selective. That therefore, if this is going to be the case, if this, it can't be that the Supreme Court Collegium was just trying to make a point with a few cases last week, then it should do this consistently uh, in every case. Would you agree? No, I agree. You know, uh, you see, there are two levels. When the Collegium sends a name and gives reasons by sending a name, or it, even if it doesn't give, and the government sends back the name, and the government would naturally give some reasons for sending back a name to the collegium. If the, if the collegium, if it has to reiterate, it must say it has reconsidered the opinion of the government and the objections and it feels they are valid or not valid. I, don't, I see nothing, no harm in this. And it should be a consistent practice as far as possible. Can I ask you, Justice Gupta, well, you know, we have Justice R.S. Sodhi, the, the retired judge of the High Court, whom the law minister had quoted. In fact, Justice Sodhi will be joining us shortly as well. Uh, you know, he, he raised the point that he believes that the collegium system is unconstitutional. He believes there should be a secretariat in high courts and the Supreme Court to appoint judges. How can it be that some judges get together to appoint judges is, is, the, is the point that he's making. On, on principle, wouldn't you agree that the system needs a complete overhaul? Is there a way to do it more transparently without necessarily giving the government a veto on appointments? There are two aspects in this question in what Justice Sodhi has raised. I've unfortunately not seen his interview. I've just read what has been quoted in the newspaper, so I may be wrong. One, he said it is not in the Constitution. He's right to that extent that in the manner in which the Supreme Court has interpreted it, it's not in the Constitution. But if we look at the three judgments in the judges' cases, we, you know, what was weighing with the government was what had happened earlier in the 70s when the government ran roughshod 
and superseded some judges. So it was a reaction that we want to have. And I still feel that they want the judiciary should appoint. And I still feel that primacy should always lie with the judges because they're the best suited to both select and assess the integrity of the candidates. But as Justice Sodi points out, there are certain difficulties. I have also been a great votary that there should be permanent secretariats in the High Court, in the Supreme Court Collegium, as well as the Supreme Court Collegium, which have the background and the entire history of all those people who are likely to come to the Supreme Court or the High Court concern. So all old complaints, all the good judgments. So you have, it's not that one of one day a name comes from the High Court and you know, you see. My other issue, a very important issue, Nidhi, which has not been considered almost by many times, the Supreme Court rejects a name sent by the High Court. It has happened to certain names which I sent as Chief Justice of the High Court. And I had to convince one or two of those people with great difficulty to give up lucrative practice to accept office. And their names were rejected. And I never found out the reason why they were rejected. I think there should be a dialogue between the Supreme Court and the High Court also that you've recommended this name. We are not agreeable to this. This is the, our view. What do you have to say? It just can't be that you, you know, just say we don't agree and this name is not being. No, absolutely. And in fact, we've, we've had former High Court judges on this program uh, only weeks ago, quoting exactly the example that you gave uh, uh, with, with this certain the, this feeling about a lack of transparency. But Justice Deepa Gupta, where where does this confrontation go from here? Because it is it is rather worrying to see it. We are the world's largest democracy to see, uh, you know, this kind of confrontation between two big arms of, of our democracy. Uh, you know, no, how yeah. do you see this ending? I, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, I agree with you, though I'm, uh, though I always said that uh, I always like a little bit of friction between the government and the uh, judiciary. It shouldn't be too well oiled because then that becomes dangerous. It's more than a but, little friction. Though. Uh, but this is not just a friction. This is becoming much more than a friction. I agree with you. But uh, having said that, I think uh, things will resolve. I have uh, hope in this collegium, which is presently there that they'll stick to their stand and they'll not be cowed down. Because I have a feeling that the government is just testing waters and seeing, well, will the, uh, will the collegium cow down or the Supreme Court? It doesn't appear to be happening. And somebody will have to step back a little bit. One or two days back, we saw stepping back by the law minister. But today, yesterday and today, he's made some other statements. You know, and he's right. I'm not saying that the law minister is entitled to his point of view. Justice Hodi is appointed to, uh, entitled to his point of view. I am entitled to my point of view. But if there has to be a different point of view, this shouldn't be a slanging match and t in the uh, in the media. It should not be taking pot shots in the media. If the law minister has any difficulty with the system, he should write to the chief justice. He should seek an appointment, or they can both meet, sit together and say, these are the issues we raise, and let's see what has to be, how, how's the, how do we go forward? You see, problem Nidhi is that we look at our personal interests. If all of us, whether it be judges, whether it be politicians, whether it be lawyers, if all of us looked what is best for the institution, what is best for the High Court concern, what is best for the Supreme Court concern, and merit is taken into consideration, Obviously, in the context of diversity and giving gender equality uh, a proper place, if you look at all this, I don't think there should be any place for confrontation. Can, can I ask you? But if you look only at merit, yeah. the problem becomes when you're not looking at merit and you're looking at other things, then there is a problem. If I could ask you a somewhat, um, how to put it, uh, maybe a sensitive question, which is that is the, is the higher judiciary and the Supreme Court in particular uh, partly to blame for the position it finds itself in today vis-a-vis -vis the governor. I'm asking this not just because of the way judges are appointed, but because of this perception that the Supreme Court is not taking up sensitive matters that could make it awkward for the government, whether it's electoral bonds, Article 370, you know, I, other I, such I, cases that should have been settled a long time ago. It took forever I've for the demonetization verdict to come. There are questions about how a former Chief Justice of India retired and immediately became a Rajya Sabha MP. So no, I'll has, the, it, has the judiciary? I'll not get into the law. No, <laughs> but I'm not saying specifically this. I'm saying that has the higher judiciary, in a way, um, 
in, in a way got a little compromised over the last few years to be very honest I with, with all I due respect com- i i won't say compromised but i've always said this and i repeat here today that the supreme court has two roles one is that adjudicator of disputes which has been doing quite well but is also a protector of the human rights of citizens and my in my opinion well they lag behind a little bit or a little more as far as being protector of human rights are concerned i mean the issue of by uh, the taking away article 370 why should it hang fire for so many years it's a small issue as far as it is legally concerned but one way or the other once it is decided it will settle what is happening in kashmir then the other big issue as far as for me is concerned as far as kashmir is concerned is whether a full fledged state could be bifurcated into union territories and you take away the right of statehood from the state it's like you know we have a concept almost like a dual sovereignty the union is sovereign and the state is sovereign that is why we have different lists in the constitution one is the state list one is the union list and one is the concurrent list now you take how, can the union does the union have the power to denude a state of its uh, right and turn it into union territory that's a very important question these need to be decided habeas corpus petitions pending for years or on end electoral bonds i feel the supreme court should be deciding these matters and i have great hope that under the new leadership justice uday lalit started the process and i'm sure that the justice chandra to this will move faster and we'll have decision on these cases All right, interesting times. Thank you very much, Justice Deepak Gupta, for joining us and being so forthright uh, with your point of view. Uh, I'd also like to welcome on the program Justice R S Sodhi, retired judge of the High Court. Now, uh, it was Justice Sodhi's interview that was tweeted by the Law Minister yesterday and has made front page headlines today. Justice Sodhi, did you wake up this morning and um, get a little bit of a shock to see your name on the front page? How did you feel about that? I was more than shocked. <laughs> I had no, I, I had no idea. I had, I had said such a thing that would that would be would be splashed on the headlines. I thought it was a, it was a very innocuous in, interview by the by the by the lady. She asked me a few questions and I gave my opinion. I I did not know I had I had stirred the hornet's net, nest. Right, but just a sorry. Coming back to the sort of uh, the, the 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 merits of the the argument that you've made, uh, I think it made headlines simply because it it, it is such a big issue these days about uh, lack of transparency or how to make uh, the issue of judicial appointments more transparent. If you could explain to us when you say that you you think that the collegium system is unconstitutional, uh, how so, sir? You see, the why I say it's unconstitutional is. Be- because this is not envisaged in the constitution at all but this has been uh, uh, interpreted in a manner and which is uh, that is why i said it is a hijack of the constitution go ahead sir and this, see and therefore i i felt see the the collegium they had evolved a new system which was which is uh, not envisaged uh, and uh, which amounts to really legislating and uh, you know amending the constitution now that i th- that i that i think is is not is not within the pur- within the purview of the supreme court's powers uh the collegium system as 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 as, as a whole i think you see, you see the now now look at it let's let's examine it a little more see there are there are three judges in the in the high court who select a judge for the high court and pass it on to the supreme court and supreme court may reject it and may 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 agree with them now those three one of them is an outsider because he's a, he's the chief justice from a different state he has got he's not from the state at all or from the high court now the 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 other other two have uh, are, are normally the ones who have their say but i still want to know what is the criteria of which on on the basis of which you select where is that laid down you know it is still ipsa dixit you, st- you still uh, are a master of your own ceremony that kind of a thing i will choose him not choose him why will you not choose the other pa- person why will he, why, why will the only, only only a particular person be chosen be chosen now if there was something if there was transparency 
in, in, in the selection system, then all these things need not be addressed or need not be said. But it, this is like, uh, you know, uh, uh, fiefdom of, of the three in the High Court. And similarly, then you go to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court just sits over there and re rejects few names sent by the High Court. Why? Why? It's not answerable. It's, uh, and, 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 and now it's the fiefdom of, of the three over there. Now, when, when they want to appoint um, uh, a judge of the Supreme Court, five of them get together and they say, no, this man is good, that man is bad, this man is good. Where is the criteria? Who do you, is, 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 is it your, your friends you want to appoint? It's or is it arbitrary and opaque. Basically, that's what it you're is saying. Absolutely, absolutely, yes, it's absolutely arbitrary. I, 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 I see no, 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 no foundation for, a, for, for, for such a kind of uh, 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 <laughs> high-handedness in appointments, as, as it were. Uh, very strong words by, used by you there, Justice Sodhi. You're saying that these are fiefdoms of the collegiums, essentially. That's how they're treating these judicial appointments, uh, high-handedness, as you put it. Uh, but can I ask you that if you, if you, when you say you want to see a secretariat in high courts and the Supreme Court for judicial appointments, do you believe, like the law minister wrote to the Chief Justice last week, that there should be a government representative who is also part of the collegium? Now, I don't know how that would work because that wasn't very clearly spelt out in the letter. But do you believe that the government should have a more proactive role or would that uh, set a, an unhealthy precedent given that the government is the biggest litigant in our courts? You know, actually, I, I don't want to uh, um, uh, say anything which, which, is, wants to, which will create a further controversy. See, see, the government must not be looked, as a, looked at as an enemy of the state or of the people or of the judiciary or of anything. They are, uh, they are government. But however, uh, in the, from, from the secretariat, what I meant was that there will not be a, an arbitrary nurse over there and people, there will be a pool. A pool from which, uh, uh, which would be well considered, uh, well documented, and and and, and from that pool, the, the uh, uh, names can be suggested for, uh, for 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 judgeship. I mean, and another thing, what I say is, why only those three people will, will decide? Who are they? What about the twenty others, or fifty others, or sixty others, uh, the other judges of the of the, of the courts? Are are they redundant? Are they, are they not supposed to be consulted at all? Are you saying you believe I mean, the collegium well, uh, could be bigger, know, as it, it could be, uh, it could be a, a larger panel of judges in the High Court and the Supreme Court? Do you think that is a, that is a solution? Well, see, solutions again, uh, if there are criteria and and there is, it's it's it, it's a transparent uh, exercise of power. Yes, uh, it, anything can work. Every anything and everything can work. But in, 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 this, in this clouded atmosphere of pick and choose, and, 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 and most of them have, uh, you know, uh, uh, they, they, come, they come under public criticism for being uh, uh, sent up for their names sent up on, on considerations other than, um, other than merit only. But I, I now, when, when that comes into being, right. the, uh, surely... But I come back to the question, sir, that do, do you agree with the law minister that a government representative should be part of the collegium? See, I, I don't have to agree with him at all. The question is, you please make a system. Sit amongst yourself and make a system. Whether you want the government over there or you don't want the government over there. But if you don't want the government over there, then mind you, you are the ones who are appointing yourself. Is it ever done anywhere in the world? Anywhere in the world, or in any in any organization, in any country, in any democracy, can you keep on appointing yourself? Or, or so, see, it's just not done. You you must have some some kind of uh, 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 you must respect the constitution at least. The constitution did not give you this right, but you and, and you grabbed it and grabbed it by a judgment. Say one judgment, two judgment, three judgment. You may have 40, 40 judgments of your own. But that doesn't, that, that, that doesn't make you right. So the, 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 the you, system has to change. That's when, a collegium business. When the yes. Supreme Court Collegium released details last week of the IB and RNAW reports about certain senior lawyers who they had 
you know, nominated for judgeships in high courts, including Saurabh Kripal, whose grounds mm -hmm. were flagged as, you know, he, because, he, uh, because he's gay, he has a Swiss partner, therefore there was a red flag raised by the uh, RNAW about him. Another judge, uh, the Intelligence Bureau said, well, he shared an article that was critical of the Prime Minister, so that was cited as a reason not to uh, appoint him as a judge. Now, the, the Supreme Court put that into public domain last week. What did you think of that move? That was, was that the right step? Should they first, do it in all cases? Firstly, I thought it was... I, no, no. I thought, I thought it was a shameful thing for the Supreme Court to have done, uh, done that. You have exposed the judge. You have exposed the, uh, the, the, the agencies. And, and are you sure it's the full thing and it's not a selective leak? I don't know. They, the, it, it just, the, the, just these lines were, uh, were the, were the uh, objections. I am doubtful. No, but these lines, uh, even Maybe. if one was to and see if, them if it worked, in isolation, the government is wrong. they were problematic. But, but that apart, that, that apart, sir, the principle of putting it out in public domain, since the government has been asking for transparency and you know, so has the legal fraternity, what, was this the right step? Uh, transparency can't be only from, from one side, you know. Only from one side. This may be the objection of the government, uh, uh, which, which may be wrong. All right. It, this may be incorrect. But there are hundreds of other cases in which they have rejected. What about, what about disclosing all those also? You disclose everything then. And also, and, and also let, us, let us have, uh, before you appoint the judge, please disclose the, uh, the, the, the IB report, the, 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 the intelligence reports. Disclose them all into public, public domain and then we'll see. So you're saying don't you be, selective be selective about like it. You can't be selective like this and say, say what, don't be selective about it. At least have a system. I, again, I'm saying again and again, please have a system which is transparent, which is, which is credible, credible. These are judges that, that are going to decide your future. As it is, as, as it is they can't decide. It takes, it takes 10 years to, for, for a case to be decided or five for five years for a case to be decided. The Supreme Court itself can't decide on, 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 on good issues. They're just hanging over there. And, then, and, they're, and they're saying we're appointing everybody on merit. If it, was, if it was, were on merits, things would have been much better. How would that merit be determined, if I could ask you one last question? Uh, you know, would it have to be... Sorry? I mean, who, who will, oh. How will that yeah. be determined? We, what we determined? Merit, the, the, the merit criteria that you're talking about. Is that something you, you think that, you ah, know, that that's say, what needs to evolve? Yes. Now, this is, the, yes, this is what you have to lay down. What is the criteria? What is the merit that a particular lawyer must attain, must be able to attain? All right, you have a public service commission examination for everything else. You have nothing over here, but, uh, but uh, you, you, you are Ipsit Dixit that this man is good, this man is bad. And, and who does it? Those three people sitting over there? And out of those three, one is, a, one is, a, one is an outsider totally? Right. Well, and, and, so and you're saying the, the, the system is so, so opaque, so wonderful? How can that be? Who can, I can't accept it. Well, Justice Sodi, thank you very much for, for speaking to us and, and sharing your views with us uh, very exhaustively today. Uh, you and uh, Justice Deepak Gupta, both of you, great to have you on the program uh, with very different points of view on how uh, this should go forward from here. But let's see how it does play out <laughs> as this confrontation between the government and the thank judiciary you. escalates. And thanks very much for joining us, sir. That's it on the program this evening. Thank you. Thank Goodbye. you.